Hello and welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanziba Nauri. In today's bulletin, we will present up and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines of the day. Few leaves false alarm as search for Texas gunman drags on. U.S. says 20,000 Russians killed in Ukraine war since December. U.S. House Speaker in Neset amid fraught U.S.-Israel ties. U.S. judge rejects Trump lawyer's mistrial request in rape case. DeSantis board approves Swing Disney in response to lawsuit. Montana Representative Zoe Zephyr sues over removal from House floor. Trump travels to Scotland to open golf course amid NY trial. U.S. Religious Freedom Panel again recommends India for blacklist. Burby unveils Anna May Ong doll for AAPI Heritage Month. May Day, World's Workers Rally, France's Pension Anger. Russia missile attack on Ukraine injures 34 damages homes. Canada reaches deal with 120,000 striking federal workers. Eleven dead, four hospitalized in gas leak in northern India. Man kills three self in dispute among Portuguese Fijian racers. Basketball legend Rivers, longtime globetrotter, dies at 73. And Sabalenka defeats Tin and Riva in Madrid, Medvedev advances. You are listening to headlines, now news in detail. The search in Texas for a gunman who fatally shot five neighbors with an air-style rifle entered a third day Monday after authorities over the weekend widened a dragnet near Houston while acknowledging they had little sense of the killer's possible whereabouts. On Monday, a heavily presence of police converged in an area where the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office reported a possible sighting of the suspect, but later said none of the persons were found to be 38-year-old Francisco Orpeza after a search by officers, scent tracking dogs and aerial units. The false alarm was one of the first times since Friday's shooting in the rural town of Cleveland that authorities had announced a possible sighting of Orpeza, underscoring how the ongoing search has continued to turn up nothing even as more and more people join in the manhunt. By Sunday evening, authorities said more than 250 officers from multiple jurisdictions had joined the search and Texas Governor Greg Abbott put up $50,000 in reward money for tips leading to Orpeza's capture. Orpeza is considered armed and dangerous after fleeing the area Friday night, likely on foot. San Jacinto County Sheriff Greg Capers said authorities had widened the search area beyond the scene of the shooting, which occurred after the suspect's neighbors asked him to stop firing of rounds in his yard late at night because the baby was trying to sleep. 
The White House said Monday it now estimates that just since December, Russia has suffered 100,000 casualties, including more than 20,000 killed, as Ukraine has rebuffed a heavy assault by Russian forces in eastern Ukraine. In what has become a grinding war of attrition, the fiercest battles have been in the eastern Donetsk region, where Russia is struggling to encircle the city of Bakhmut in the face of dogged Ukrainian defense. White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. estimate is based on newly declassified American intelligence. He did not detail how the intelligence community derived the number. General Mark Miley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said in November that Russia had suffered well over 100,000 killed or wounded in the first eight months of the war. The new figures suggest that Russian losses have dramatically accelerated in recent months. The U.S. House Speaker addressed Israel's parliament on Monday, a rare honor awarded to the highest-ranking Republican in U.S. politics at a time of fraught relations between Israel's government and Democratic President Joe Biden. Speaker Kevin McCarthy and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu portrayed the speech as a nod to bipartisan U.S. support for Israel as it marks 75 years since its creation. Critics say the platform given to McCarthy, he is only the second House Speaker to address the Knesset after Newt Gingrich in 1998 is appointed jab at Biden. McCarthy spoke to the Knesset, greeted by frequent applause and a standing ovation as lawmakers returned from a month-long recess. They are expected to resume the fight over a contentious plan promoted by the most right-wing government in Israel's history to overhaul the judiciary. The plan has split Israelis and drawn a rare public rebuke from Biden. Amid the tensions, Biden has so far denied Netanyahu a typically customary invitation to the White House after his election win late last year. The United States judge overseeing the rape case against Donald Trump has denied a request for a mistrial after a lawyer for the former president accused Judge Louis Kaplan of ruling in a biased manner against Trump. In an 18-page letter filed early on Monday in Manhattan Federal Court, lawyer Joe Tacopina accused Kaplan of being biased against Trump, including in the jury's presence during the civil proceedings that began last week. Tacopina said the effect of Kaplan's rulings manifest a deeper leaning towards one party over another, including in comments where the judge openly expresses favoritism. The judge denied the motion for a mistrial before testimony resumed on Monday. He did not explain his decision, ABC News reported. Days after Disney sued Florida's governor in federal court for what it described as retaliation for opposing the state's so-called Don't Say Gay bill, members of Disney World's governing board made up of Governor Ron DeSantis' appointees authorized a lawsuit on Monday against the entertainment giant. Members of the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District voted unanimously to sue Disney in a state court in the Orlando area, as well as defend itself in federal court in Tallahassee, where the entertainment company filed its lawsuit last Wednesday. The Disney lawsuit against the governor, the board, and its five members asked a judge to void the governor's takeover of the theme park district previously controlled by Disney for 55 years. We will seek justice in our own backyard, said Martin Garcia, chair of the Central Florida Tourism Oversight District. The Associated Press News Agency sent an email on Monday morning to Disney officials seeking comment. Montana State Representative Zoe Zephyr asked a court Monday to allow for her return to the House floor after she was silenced and barred for chiding her Republican colleagues over legislation to restrict gender-affirming health care and for encouraging protesters. Attorneys for the first-term lawmakers sued in a state district court in Helena on behalf of Zephyr, a transgender Democrat who represents a liberal district in the college town of Missoula. 
and several constituents who the attorney said were being denied their right to adequate representation. Zephyr, whose comments in the Montana legislature have made her a prominent figure in transgender rights and in conversations about the muffling of dissent in state houses, said in a statement Monday that she and her constituents were targeted because I dare to give voice to the values and needs of transgender people like myself. The legal challenge against House Speaker Matt Regier and State House Sergeant at Arms Bradley Murphy comes with just days left in the legislature's biennial session. Murphy said he would not comment on the lawsuit. Former U.S. President Donald Trump traveled to Scotland on Monday to open a new golf course at his resort near Aberdeen. Trump and his son, Eric, were greeted by two pipers, a red carpet and a 10-vehicle motorcade as they stepped off his private jet with an American flag painted on the tail fin. It's great to be home. This was the home of my mother, Trump said before getting into one of his cars. Trump's mother, Mary, was born on the Isle of Louise in the Outer Hebrides before immigrating to the United States. Trump, who has announced that he will seek the presidency again next year, will head to his golf course in Dunbeg on Ireland's west coast when he leaves Scotland. An independent commission in the United States has, for the fourth year in a row, recommended that India's government, led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, be added to a religious freedom blacklist, saying that conditions in the country for religious minorities continued to orsan throughout 2022. In its annual report on Monday, the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom again called on the U.S. Department of State to designate India as a country of particular concern. The independent panel has made appeals for the designation since 2020. The label accuses a government of systematic, ongoing egregious violations of religious freedom and opens the door to economic sanctions. The body said that the Indian government at the national, state and local levels promoted and enforced religiously discriminatory policies in 2022. Those included laws targeting religious conversion, interfaith relationships, the wearing of hijabs and cow slaughter, which negatively impact Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Dalits and Adivasis. Six months after she was immortalized with the U.S. quarter, Asian-American Hollywood trailblazer Anna May Ong has received another accolade affirming her icon status, her own Barbie. Mattel announced Monday the release of an Anna May Ong doll for Asian-American and Pacific Islanders Heritage Month. The figure has her trademark bangs, eyebrows, and well-manicured nails. The doll is dressed in a red gown with a shiny golden dragon design and cape, inspired by her appearance in the 1934 movie Limehouse Blues. Ong's niece, Anna Ong, gave her blazing and worked closely with the brand to develop the Burbies look. I did not hesitate at all. It was such an honor and so exciting. Ong told the Associated Press in an email. I wanted to make sure they got her facial features and clothing correct, and they did. As a child, Anna Ong owned a Barbie and a Skipper doll and a Barbie dream house and car. She loves the idea that Asian children will now have a doll who looks like them. The doll is part of the Barbie Inspiring Women series, which features dolls in the likeness of pioneering women. Past inspirations include aviator Amelia Earhart and artist Frida Kahlo. Now it's time for global updates. People squeezed by inflation and demanding economic justice took to streets across Asia and Europe to mark May Day on Monday. In an outpouring of worker discontent from Tokyo to Pakistan to France, not seen since before the worldwide COVID-19 lockdowns, French police charged at radical protesters and troublemakers smashing bank 
and shop windows and setting fires as union pushed the president to scrap a higher retirement age. South Koreans pleaded for higher wages. Spanish lawyers demanded the right to take days off. Migrant domestic workers in Lebanon merged in a country plunged into economic crisis. While May Day is marked around the world as a celebration of labor rights, this year's rallies tapped into broader frustrations. Climate activists spray-painted a Louis Vuitton museum in Paris, and protesters in Germany demonstrated against violence targeting women and LGBTQ plus people. Russia launched its second large salvo of missiles at Ukraine in recent days early Monday, damaging buildings and owning at least 34 people in the eastern city of Pavlorod but failing to hit Kiev, officials said. Air raid sirens began blaring across the capital at about 3.45 a.m followed by explosions as Ukrainian defense systems intercepted missiles. 18 cruise missiles were fired from the Murmansk and Caspian regions, and 15 of them were intercepted, said Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Valery Zaluzny. The head of Kiev city administration, Serhiy Popko, said all missiles fired at the city were shot down, as well as some drones. He didn't provide further details. The attack follows Friday's launch of more than 20 cruise missiles and two explosive drones at Ukraine, the first to target Kiev in nearly two months. In that attack, Russian missiles hit an apartment building in Uman, a city about 215 kilometers south of Kiev, killing 21 people, including three children. In Monday's attack, missiles hit Pavlorod in the eastern Dnipropetrovsk region owning 34 people, including five children, according to Serhii Lizak, the region's top official. Canada has reached an agreement with 120,000 striking federal workers, effectively ending one of the largest public sector work stoppages in the country's history, which had crippled services from passport renewals to immigration. While most strikers are set to return to work after almost two weeks of deadlock, more than 35,000 workers at the Canada Revenue Agency, who also went on a strike last month, are still negotiating, the Public Service Alliance of Canada Union said on Monday. During a period of record high inflation and soaring corporate profits, workers were told to accept less, but our members came together and fought for better. PSAC National President Chris Elward said in a statement, This agreement delivers important gains for our members that will set the bar for all workers in Canada. A third of Canada's public workers, around 155,000 people, began striking on April 19, hitting picket lines at hundreds of locations around the country with demands for cost-of-living raises and telework flexibility. The head of the Treasury Board, the federal employer, said on Monday that the deal came after many weeks of hard work, negotiation and compromise. Eleven people died and four more were hospitalized after a gas leak Sunday in northern India's Punjab state, local media reported. The incident occurred at an industrial area in Ludhiana city, but the source of the gas leak is still unclear. Police told the Press Trust of India News Agency. India's National Disaster Response Force sealed off the densely populated area and evacuated residents. Authorities were trying to ascertain the type of gas in the leak, PTI quoted disaster response officials as saying. Ludhiana Deputy Commissioner Sudabi Mali told the news agency it was possible that the gas may have spread from manholes. A man fatally shot three people before turning his gun on himself, Portuguese police said Sunday, in what local media described as a dispute among rival Pigeon racers. Andrea Gonçalves, police commissioner in the city of Setúbal, south of Lisbon, described a dispute between four men aged between 30 and 60, and said one of them had killed the others before shooting himself. She described the deaths as an isolated situation, related to an unresolved issue between the men. The four dead individuals were participating in a pigeon race. 
Portuguese media reported from the scene, and their disagreement also centered on an illegal vegetable garden. Portugal has restrictive gun laws, but firearms are legal for hunting. Of the 80 or so annual homicides that Portugal has registered on average since 2015, around a fifth are committed with firearms, according to police statistics. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 15,535.89. The NYC composite is decreased by 9.99 points or 0.06%. Tokyo stock close price is 29,123.18. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 266.74 points or 0.92%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,323.2746. The Shanghai index is increased by 37.39 points or 1.14%. Hong Kong stock close price is 19,894.57. The Hang Seng index is increased by 54.29 points or 0.27%. Bombay stock close price is 61,112.44. The Sensex index is increased by 463.06 points or 0.76%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Larry Gatter Rivers, who helped integrate high school basketball in Georgia before playing for the Harlem Globetrotters and becoming a country commissioner in his native Savannah, died Saturday at age 73. Rivers died from cancer, Chatham County Commission Chairman Chester Ellis told the Savannah Morning News. Campbell and Sons Funeral Home said Rivers died at a hospital in Savannah. Rivers was a sophomore on the Old Black Beach High School team that owned the first Georgia High School Association basketball tournament to include black and white players in 1967. He blossomed into an All-State player, graduating from the Savannah High School in 1969 and going on to be a small college All-American at Moberly Junior College in Missouri and an All-Conference guard at what is now Missouri Western State University in St. Joseph. He went on to play and coach for 16 years with the Harlem Globe Trotters, reuniting for a time with high school coach Russell Ellington. Russian teenager Mira Andreeva's impressive run at the Madrid Open came to an end after a loss to second-seeded Arena Sabalenka on Monday. After three straight set victories against top 40 opponents in her main draw debut, the 16-year-old wildcard couldn't get past Sabalenka in the fourth round, losing 6-3, 6-1 in her first center court appearance in the Spanish capital. Andreeva became the youngest player to reach the last 16 of a WTA 1000 event after upsetting 2021 U.S. Open finalist Leila Fernandez in the first round, 14th-ranked Beatrice Haddad Maya in the second and 19th-ranked Magda Linet in the third. She won 16 straight matches at all levels before falling to Sabalenka, her first top 10 opponent. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
That's all in today's news. Keep watching Millennium News 24 for latest update. Millennium TV US and Millennium News 24 network is transmitted and available to be watched free for all TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all types of informative and entertainment program. Thank you.